Hello and welcome to TNT Thursday Night Treasures. So good to see everybody. Happy holidays. Hope you're ready for our big virtual holiday party tonight. Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Bex. I see there's some other people that are watching and listening that maybe aren't on the chat yet. Good to see you guys too. We really appreciate it. Whitney redeemed a Christie Hydrate. Boom! Just like that. Jeez, I just got sat down, man. <laughs> And like a regular have, hydrate. We'll take care of that here in just I a second. I have a Christmas then. glass. For sure. Christmas glass. I like to hear that. Let's see, got a little, little Christmas tree. And it is spiked eggnog for today. Heck yeah, we like spiked eggnog for it sure. It is um, brandy, rum, and whiskey. It's called Old Santee eggnog. <laughs> hey, McShawn, good to see you. What? Gas leak? A gas leak. Uh, we'll watch the flames there. Uh, that's crazy. You want to come to our house? You know where I, we live. <laughs> that's right. Come on over here and we will hook you guys up. Okay, Indy. The cat is climbing up my body. That's what she does. Ouch. Uh, Bex is like spiked eggnog. Isn't that regular eggnog? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Indy, what are you doing? Hey, don't get on the table. You're messing <laughs> everything. Oh, say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi, Indio. She's like, hi, everybody. I'm here to destroy your holidays. And eat your eggnog. Tracy just subscribed with the Tier 1 subscription. Thank you so much, Tracy. Good to see you. And because of that, we, we have the cat and the dog, McShawn. We all get a special emote. Thank you. Uh, look at that look great emote that we just got. Um, Beck says, legit, that's what our family eggnog recipe has in it. Yeah. That's how it should be. <laughs> Well, you guys probably can't hear it too much, but we've got some festive, royalty-free holiday music going on here in the background. We can't play through the stream right now, so that's unfortunate, but you might be able to pick up a few, a few bars here and there. So my festive holiday beverage tonight is gonna be some hot cocoa in this nice little mug, but Christy, in her infinite wisdom, has got Stroopwaffle. Oh, let's see if we can get on camera there. Stroop waffle alcohol focus. Do it. Why won't you focus? You're making us seasick. <laughs> yeah, it never. It always focuses, but it won't tonight for some reason. All right. Well, it's Stroop waffle, so I get my caramel alcoholic spiked hot cocoa. Belgian waffle. That's right. You can't go wrong with that. Um. Um. Uh, so McShawn, uh, you know, take your iPad to the car. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. Open some windows. Don't inhale. Don't don't die. Don't ex don't go splody. <laughs> All right, so a variety of things to look at tonight. Um, I gotta close this down, so talk amongst yourselves for a second. Brian and I uh, had to reset every single thing oh here. Oh my gosh. Since we haven't done this in a while. Yeah, and there was a big Mac OS update this week and it's like destroyed all of our audio setup. So we're waiting for solutions to that. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I forgot how to drive. And I forgot about the time lag. It's really annoying. Well, the annoying thing is that this royalty-free holiday music seems to have a commercial between every track. <laughs> That's not very handy. That's mm. not very holiday. Are you on Discord, too? No, but um, I can fire it up. Um, I saw the Stroopwaffle liquor at the store, almost bought it. Now Katie wants it. Oh, yes, it is. It is good. And they also have other flavors. There's chocolate. I think there's a brownie and there's something else, but the Stroopwafel is the way to go. And first of all, if you've never had a real Stroopwafel from Belgium, like that's the shit right there. Hey, don't be don't be dissing the Macs now, you people. I thought Macs just worked. Well, they do. It's just that it's a new update, so we have to get used yeah, to it. Yeah, the Mac works fine. The plugin that made the audio work decides not yeah, to work it's now. Not, it's not the Mac that doesn't work. It's the third-party software. That's right. Um, all right, so... We thought we would look at Christmas around the world. And since we are um, talking about um, the Christmas music that won't play, let's start with name your favorite Christmas song. Ooh, that's a tough one. Really? I, mine's easy. It's Winter Wonderland. Okay. Well, you do you. I got I got an easy one. Winter Wonderland's my favorite Christmas song. Mmm. Mmm. I'm hydrating, just if anybody asked or not. I haven't done my hydrate yet because my cocoa might still be too hot. <laughs> but I'll get there, I promise. Add more Stroopwafel, it'll be fine. Um, 
I prefer the Beck one. says not the hippo song, Christy. Yeah. Oh, I do love the hippo song. That's one of my favorites. Okay, wait, Bex, do you know? So the hippo song is I want a hippopotamus for Christmas, and I make everybody sing that at the top of their lungs when we're in Oman. Um, and we play the my oh. I, my iPhone through the radio. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, <laughs> and it is um, my favorite. But, Bex, have you heard that Leanne Rimes did a remake of it? Oh, it's not my favorite. It is not good. I'm sorry, Leanne Rimes, but no. That is not at all the same as the original hippo song mm. where a hippopotamus is a bear vegetarian and it's just super cute and it's the best song ever i also love dominic the donkey if you haven't oh heard that that's one, a good one that's, that's a good, a good one. one but really my all-time favorite is a winner wonderland and i like annie lennox's version she does this like scat in it it's pretty good um yeah. just don't mind me guys i'm at my own little christmas moment over here brian oh. needs kids temperature hot chocolate i might need kids temperature hot <laughs> he chocolate. always does he always whines that his tea is cocoa like, i burned my tongue on my hot cocoa today always but he always needs with the Stroop waffle shot in there. Yeah. yeah Told ya. That's, that's really good stuff, people. Told ya. Yeah, you can't go wrong with mm. that Stroop waffle stuff if you've never had it before. Mm-hmm. That's right. And the Hippopotamus song is a classic. Yeah. It is a very, very good song. Yeah, so if you hear the Leanne Rhymes, that is not how it's supposed to sound. I'm just no. saying. The Leanne Rhymes, I heard it for the first time the other day, and I was, I was like, hmm... No, this what, doesn't work. What? What's your favorite one? I don't know. I was thinking because I've heard quite a few of them recently, but um, oh, I've been listening to the old timey Christmas stuff, which I really like, and I grew up on all the Bing Crosby and all that old-timey. stuff. And and I don't. So I really like Bing Crosby and all the White Christmas, all the all the songs from White Christmas. I really like. Me too. And the, but I really like that 1940s version of Jingle Bells that they've been playing a lot, like the scatty, like post-war version with the Downey Mexico, we ain't got no snow, oh, yeah. and the tequila bells will ring. Like there's something really festive about that version. So I don't know. I think I'm going to go with yours that it's hard to pick a favorite. So yeah. it is hard to pick a favorite. But I definitely like like the classic, traditional holiday songs the best. So, um. But you guys on chat, let us know. Yeah, nobody's nobody's telling us. Let us know your favorite Christmas and or holiday tunes. Or favorites, plural. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm just going to be over here getting drunk on soup waffle hot cocoa, guys. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> He's going to need a refill soon. Do you see that picture? It's Wick and Kelty. How cute is that? They're so cute in their Christmas clothes. That was our puppies. Uh, Wiki was dressed like Santa and Kelty was dressed like an elf. Um, Kelty was a demon child. She, uh, was a Scotty. And I was like, she was fine for me. Yeah. She hated me. She loved Brian. Wait, this is a theme with our pets. <laughs> Wiki loved me, though. But, um, they're, they're both gone. But that was one of their fun little Christmas outfits that they actually put on for two and a half minutes before Wick ate them. <laughs> one year, um, so, you know, we were mostly in Oman for the last... Well, not this year and not the last year, but before that, for the last five years, we've been in Oman for Christmas. And so um, last year, we decided um, that we were going to do something out of the box. What are you doing? I'm going to try to get the holiday music. All all I can see is your Christmas belly. I know. I can see the Christmas belly. (laughs) His, His ugly Christmas Star Wars shirt. Oh, he's moving the Christmas music down. Uh, Beck says, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I heard um, a version of... Oh, oh, hi, Quinch Press. Good I to heard, see you, Quinch. Um, what were we watching? Oh, uh, what's his name? From Glee, who played the Grinch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did uh, the first Noel on the Christmas he, special he Rockefeller Center He was thing. the teacher on Glee. Yeah, Matthew Morrison or something like that is his name. That was a great one. McShawn and Todd, would you like me to correct that you your stroop waffles are Dutch? Yes, I know they're Dutch. Did I say Belgium? My fault. I said Belgium. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I know they're Dutch. I think the the fans that introduced me to it at Star Wars Celebration were from Belgium. They were. So that's why I associate that. It was a girl. It wasn't just fans. It was a cute little girl, and she gave Joe and Brian stroop waffle, well, and I stole them. No, she gave Joe stroop waffle. I'm pretty sure Brian was there too, but mm. I stole them. This was in London, and I stole them all. Um, I'm more partial to all the Bob Rivers Twisted Tunes versions. Yeah, that's funny. I got a, um, one year in Oman, I got on a 
a kick of the 12 days of Christmas, but like, you know, the 12 toys or the, all the crazy stuff. And so I kept playing and trying to find the weirdest 12 days of Christmas versions. Um, Beck says that you have an awesome sweater on. Yep, it's my Star Wars holiday sweater. Nice. Yes, Tracy, you have been yelled at to make the correction. Uh, you did make it. You did your duty. I was correct. Brian was wrong. Not Belgium. Dutch. Stroof Ruffle. There's Let's Do This. Hey, good to see you, Let's Do This. Hope you're having a good night. Cheers to you. Happy holidays. All right, so. Happy holidays. There's another good one. Um, so Brian and I decided to take off to wait for it. Of all places, Christmas, Las Vegas. Because we are in Arizona, Las Vegas is very close. <laughs> it's only four hours away by car. And this wasn't COVID. This was before that. This was last year. And um, But the thing about Las Vegas, if you do not know, is that they get snow. Well, in the mountains they get snow. Sean, I'm very upset that you're missing tonight, too. She just texted me. Aww. I'm sorry that... Uh, you Sorry, your house is going to go explode. Gas problems. Um, that Not exactly <laughs> like that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Take some Tums and call us in the morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, go to Tracy's house or go to our house and uh, watch it again. And turn it on. Um, anyway, um, Vegas has a mountain. That's right. And so you can actually... Mount if, Charleston. If you're actually here in Arizona, you could drive to Flag and see snow, whatever. But you can also drive to Vegas and see snow. It's just a short jaunt up the mountain. And so we decided... Um, we typically stay at um, either the Wynn or the Palazzo because I have points <laughs> at those places. And so we, um, oh, I guess I took it out. We stayed at, um, we decided to stay at Palazzo for just, we went um, two days before Christmas and we came home Christmas Eve. So we actually spent Christmas here, um, but we went um, Christmas Eve um, all the way to Vegas for fun. And so we like did a nice di dining out. Oh, what is the name of my favorite restaurant at Wh Wynn? Wing Lei. Wing Lei. Holy crap. If you have not been to Wing Lei, it's clearly a Chinese restaurant. And it is fancy Chinese. And, and fantastic. it is delicious. Yeah. Best Chinese food in the world. I mean, I might have had better in Chinatown in New York, but no, only by this much. No, it's delicious. It is the best. And it's super fancy and super fun. And they always have like cocktails and fun things. And it's really pretty. Um, and they have these persimmon trees and all this stuff around. Eh, not persimmon, pomegranate. They have pomegranate mm. trees all around and stuff. It's super cool. And what Christy didn't mention about Mount Charleston is they have a Christmas village. I'm getting there. Oh, I spoiled it. Gosh. You spoiled it. Damn it. I ruined Christmas again. Ugh. So anyway, we stayed at the Palazzo. We ate at Wingley. Wingley. And then we drove up the mountain and at the top of the mountain, there is this little um, um, resort cabin kind of thing. And they have a year-round Christmas village store. And they have like a diner. Um, so they serve food. There's like this little, um, it's like a cabin. So Christmas it's like food. Wood. And then there's like this patio and you can look out on the snow and all that stuff. And um, being in Oman for the last five years and being in Arizona, it was probably the first time we'd seen snow in 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we drove up there, and here's Brian getting ready to order his breakfast. <laughs> and here is the little entrance to the um, little shop. Apparently, they do Christmas year year round in this little shop. So, yeah, Christmas Village, anytime. Little Alpine Village, but it's so cute and it's so fun. Super cute. You can get your Christmas on whenever you're in Vegas. There's me in the snow. Proof. There was snow. <laughs> How exciting. There am I? I'm not there yet. There's me in the snow. And it was freezing. We had to find our coats and remember to pack them. That was oh, the yeah. biggest problem. And so tonight I'm going to be drawing the Heat Miser and the Snow Miser from A Year Without a Santa Claus. That was a great movie, too. All right. McShawn says, watching in the car. Good job, guys. Watching in the car while the house goes splody. Don't explode the house up. Um, what about um, favorite Christmas movie? Well, only I mean, Bex answered me on the um, song. On the but music. I mean, we all know mine's White Christmas. Yeah, me too. I, I, mean, love I, that. I say it over and over again, and I can't. I mean, the whole sisters number. Yeah, and, I love that. Yeah, White Christmas has always probably been my favorite. 
How about you guys? What's your when he says die hard? Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a good call. It's not Christmas till someone falls off the fucking Nakatori Plaza. <laughs> Yippee ki yay! Or rare exports? I don't know if I've seen rare exports. Hmm. This Christmas, Tracy says. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's um, do this. Jingle, jingle all the way. way. That's a funny one. Um, we watched. We've watched two this season. We're not really big into the. Like, I was telling her earlier that we watched Holiday. Yeah, Holiday date was okay. Everyone's kind of liked it so far that was With, on chat earlier. Uh, Emma. Emma Roberts. Emma Roberts. And, and it was kind of cute. And then... Budget Chris Hemsworth. Budget Chris Hemsworth, for sure. But <laughs> it was okay. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, Jingle Jangle. I thought that was super yeah, cute. I like Jingle Jangle I love the lot. music. I love the costuming. Man, the costumes mm -hmm. were amazing. If you don't like musicals, just turn that off and watch the costumes. It was really well done. It was super cool. Agreed. Um, but, you know, the classic ones. Rudolph. I'm wearing my reindeer shirt, if you can't really tell. I don't know if you much you can see of my reindeer shirt, but I can't move my cameras too far away. Um, <laughs> but um, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Uh, the Did you watch Claws? It came out last year, and I loved that. Yes. Yes, we that did. That was so good. And um, what did we watch this year? The second one with, uh, what's his name? And the, his Goldie Hawn. And his Goldie Hawn. Oh, the Christmas Chronicles, too. Chronicles. Christmas Chronicles. Yeah. We watched that last year. That was and fun. And then the new one came out this year. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Netflix recommends that one to me a lot. A lot. Yeah, Christmas Chronicles was cute. Um, two was and all right. I thought the second one, the story was better than the first. Well, maybe, but, it, you know, it's a bunch of kids. I don't really care. Um, what's the other one? Um, the Santa Claus. With the first one with, what's his name? Buzz Lightyear. Um... Tim Allen, yeah, good thing of his name. That one, um, the the Santa Claus, I liked the original one because it was such an original idea. And then, you know, the Mrs. Claus, and then the number three, and the number five, and the number the escape eight. Claus. That gets a little bit much, but um, yeah. I thought the first one was cute. I, I liked it as a cute one. Um, it made me cry. Watch it! <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That was Bex. <laughs> Unless you says, okay, okay. <laughs> Which one is that? Uh, the um, Claws. Oh, yeah, I love that one. It was so good. And two was meh, says Tracy, about Chronicles. Yeah, I think so, too. But I liked it that Mrs. Claus was like a witch. I liked that part. Um, Les Dula says he watched all three in a row for the Santa Claus movies. Two is okay. I like that girl. Um, three is just a little bit dumb. I heard three is like the worst of them. What do you mean you heard? You didn't watch it? I've never seen three. Oh. Huh. That's weird, because I have. Um, what's the other... Um, a white Christmas, Brian and I, and Bex knows this, I make the students every year watch White Christmas <laughs> and Christmas Vacation. Christmas Vacation. That's another classic, let's face it. Um, my mother, actually, I hope nobody I'm related to is watching this for a lot of reasons, but <clears throat> um, specifically because my mother, um, the other day, we have some relatives that have just moved and the daughter doesn't have a job and... My, my mom is like, I was like, what, what do you mean she can't get a job? You know, can't she find something? And she's like, well, she's waiting for something in management. And I was like, oh, my God, did you do that on purpose? She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, that's a line from Christmas Vacation. She's like, oh, my God, that was, like, perfect. Didn't even know it. It was, like, our real life. <laughs> I was like, that could be sad. <clears throat> Bex says, with our spiked hot chocolate. Yes, yes, spiked hot chocolate for sure. Brian just ran away. I don't know where he went. Um, I guess to get out some paint. You didn't think of that before we started? Or probably more Stroopwafel. That's probably what he's doing. So, um, the other couple of times that we've been in the States for Christmas in the last few years, um, we went to Disney. Um, we went to Disney World once with my parents for their anniversary. Their anniversary is in December. And so some anniversary they had, we met them there. And then, um, again, more recently we went because, again, we were in the States and didn't have anything else to do. Um... The first time we went, um, have we been there three times for, for Disney Christmas? Yes. yes. Um, the first time we went, uh, we'd never been there before for that kind of stuff or for any real event. This was California, I think, wasn't it? No, it was Florida. It was Florida, and it was it was back before anybody went to Disney. Like it was. Yeah, it, it was, was before like, it was a thing to do. Yeah, it was. It not was a, a thing. long time ago. It was right after we got married. It was actually cheap to go at Christmas because nobody they couldn't get anybody to come at Christmas. Right, and it was um, it, it was a long time ago. It was right when we first got married. But anyway, we they lost our luggage. Oh, and God. so we were on the Magical Express, but so the first Magical all, Express has no luggage. <laughs> yeah, so we fly from Kansas City to Florida. So we're wearing our heavy winter clothes. 
We get there and it's like 85 degrees and we have to do everything at the parks in our heavy winter clothes. Because we have no luggage. Lost our luggage. They find our luggage, which has our Florida clothes in it, and then ends up being cold and rainy the rest of the time we're there. <laughs> it was kind of ironic. Um, but the best thing was, is that Christmas Eve, you go to bed and you wake up Christmas morning and Mickey Mouse brought you a stocking and hung it on your door. It was the coolest thing ever. Mickey brought me a stocking. I thought, well, Santa Claus brought me a Mickey Mouse stocking. I don't know how it worked, but... Chris Press says Miracle on 34th Street oh, yeah. is my favorite Christmas movie. I and I really love Claus. Miracle on 34th Street is one of my favorites. But the original one. Yeah, the the black one for sure. O'Hare. Yeah. Yeah. And um Tracy says she's never seen it. What? What? You're a slacker, you're yeah, right. It is it is really good. I think you would like it. The first one. I mean, if you go back and watch the Marine O'Hare, because she is amazing and beautiful and I love her and everything she ever did. Uh, dead does. I think she died recently. Um, but anyway, uh, that one is for sure. The the second one, the girl annoyed me a bit, but the kid. But kids annoy me in general, so there you go. So anyway, Christmas in Disney um, turns out to be super fun. Oh yeah, it was a blast. So these are some of the older photos, and I don't know who those people are. They just stepped into our photo. Not really clear on that. I'm still seeing a camel, so. I like the camel. That was from the recent one. That was from our most recent one. If it will ever turn. What is up with this? Oh, there it goes. So that's just, you know, Kim, whatever. Here's my parents. Here's Bill and Jana. Well, maybe. I'm still better, seeing a Christmas tree. I better drink while they come up. There they are. There's Christy's parents. Well, not on my end. There they go. Yeah, they're up there. So, Bill and Jana. Um, here's a funny story. Again, hope nobody I know is watching. So, this is a free Christy's childhood memory. Whoa. Bex, redeemed to hydrate. Oh, Thank you, Bex. Good job. Oh, wait for me too, since I'm already drinking half my eggnog. So my my childhood story is that my mother is a crazy person, and she's afraid of anyone in a mask. That includes Santa. One of my earliest memories is that my mom was um, a teacher her whole life. She taught second grade, and um, she had to go to some big wig thing she was something in the state teachers association or something and we had to go to jefferson city which is the capital um and we had to go to some meeting or something and it was like the week before school got out so it was the week before christmas or week and a half before christmas and we go to the state capital mom's like you know dressed up and i'm with her because i think i had to go because school i don't know why but i had to go with her and so i'm dragged being drug along and i'm like maybe eight maybe younger around eight years old and um She's not doing well during the pandemic then with the fear of masks, <laughs> true enough. She, it freaks her the hell out. So anyway, we are we're going into the Capitol building and all of a sudden my mom looks up and is like, eep! I mean, like literally like a high-pitched little eep noise, grabs my hand and we run and dive into the women's bathroom. And I'm like, what the hell just happened? And she's like, Santa is down the hall. And I was like, uh-oh, red alert, red alert. <laughs> Whitney says the Ozarks didn't get the COVID. She's fine. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> um, my parents are believers, but yes, the rest of the world, maybe not. But anyway, um, so... That we, reminds me that my sister was telling me today on the phone that where she works in Missouri, they only implemented mask this week. Holy shit. That's because, frightening. Because like, finally like the 40th person got COVID or something. Huh. And they're like, this might be a real thing. <laughs> yeah, she works in a, like a, a factory setting, so there's bunches of people together all the time. But... Anyway, so my mother hides us in the bathroom, and she makes me, the eight-year-old, poke my head out and see if Santa has gone by yet before she would leave the restroom. We almost missed the meeting and the whole thing, and I'm like peeking my head out and checking the hallways. And so then she'd make me walk ahead, and I had to look down the hall to make sure Santa wasn't there. So those little childhood things of here's your daughter on Santa's lap, yeah, I have none of those. Easter Bunny, nope, none of those. Nothing with a mask. Because Santa might get you. Well, she does. She's like, you never know who's underneath there. Here's another funny thing about, I call my mother Otis. Um, when you're in a store and you're a little kid and you shout mom, like 30 people turn around. But for some reason, when I was like five, I started calling my mother Otis. Because Christy gives everybody nicknames. I do give everybody nicknames, but like Bex. But <laughs> anyway, um, so I started calling my mom Otis. So um, Otis is just kind of nuts. But here's another little thing she doesn't like. She doesn't like snow globes because she feels that the things are trapped in there and they can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They can't breathe. I and forgot she about doesn't, that. She doesn't drink, so it's not that. <laughs> but anyway, you got to love Otis. And Bill is a former major, retired major sergeant. Oh, right. Sergeant Major Seifkis. 
he was a major and then he went into the National Guard and became a sergeant. So he was actually both those things. But he retired to highest rank, so he's Major Seifkus. Good for him. Here's some uh, little fun photos, if they ever load. Yep, you're there. Snowman. It's a fat snowman. So Brian and I went um, one time before Christmas. I had to go to a tennis tournament. And part of the deal with these tennis tournaments is if you lose on Saturday, you don't play on Sunday. So losers go home. Well, you don't book your flight like you're a loser, right? You book your flight like you're a winner. So you assume you're going to play Sunday. Well, have we ever played Sunday? Once. <laughs> Once. <laughs> so we, Brian and I went to uh, Disney World because it's in Orlando is where the tent it's in Lake Nona. And so, um, yeah, Chow Time and Randy aren't on here tonight, but it's right where they are. So we decided to go up to, uh, Disney Springs. And so they had this whole neat Christmas tree display. This was only like last year, year before. Yeah. And, um, this was last year, I think. I think so. Anyway, they had this neat whole Christmas tree display we'd never seen before at Disney Springs. And it was super With, cute. like themed Christmas trees based on Disney characters and stuff. Yeah. It was really fun. Really neat stuff. And they had like a Star Wars Christmas tree and like a Little Mermaid Christmas tree and like every kind of Disney Christmas tree. It was really cool. It was really cool. And luckily it was pre-COVID because we were all cram-packed in yeah, there. Yeah, and that reminds me of, here's the, you know, the Christmas parade. If you've ever been to Disney World to see the Christmas parades, you forget how busy Disney World is these days or pre-COVID. And so... It um, is weird though, seriously. Like the first time we went to Disney for Christmas, it was just about empty. And now it's actually one of their most popular days. Everyone wants to go to Disney for Christmas. Same with Halloween. But so here is, we were at obviously Magic Kingdom and um, we are watching the Christmas parade and this is as close as we could get. And I'm short and I'm like, Brian, take some photos. So there's like a thousand photos and he clearly was holding up his phone and just like click, 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 click. <laughs> this is all it is. The tops of people's head and in the far distance, there's like something. Yeah, I, I don't know what I that's I clearly got is. nothing out of that. But the other thing, if you haven't ever done the Disney one, is the electric parade at night. And they do this more than just Christmas, but at Christmas they change it up. So that's super fun, too. Yeah, the electric... I don't even know if they're doing the electric parade right now, but it was... I don't doing any parades right well, now. Well, not right now, yeah. But it was really cool. And then, if you venture over um, to the other side of the parks... Isn't this at... Um, um, not Universal. I don't know. Uh, oh, this was at Hollywood Studios. Yeah, Hollywood Studios. I can't um, remember the name this of This was the big light display, the family light display, and it was there for several years, and then it all got taken down. If it ever loads, there it goes. I'm getting spinniness here yeah. on our internet. I can't think of the name of the family. The Something Family Christmas Display. Yeah. Osborne. The Osborne, Osborne Family Christmas. Yeah. And it was amazing, especially when you think that these lights used to all be on their home. Before they went to Disney. Yeah, that's crazy. Here's a couple of pictures of that. It's fun. Uh, Whitney says, I remember owning the Electric Light Parade soundtrack on vinyl as a kid. Ooh, Ooh that's fun. That is cool. That's really cool, actually. I had the Jungle Cruise music. I had a little tiny uh, record player and it had those plastic records that were different colors. And I had one of those that was Jungle Cruise. And I had another one from Disney, but I don't remember what. Probably Mickey Mouse Club. Speaking or of the but. Jungle Cruise, um, there used to be the. The Mickey Finn boats at Disney uh, from Davy Crockett. And apparently they got taken out in the 80s or 90s. And a private collector has just announced that they have one and they're going to put it in, on display at like a museum or something. It's being restored huh. right now. So. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, this Osborne Family Christmas Lights thing is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. It was really cool. And now it's boxed up in a warehouse somewhere, which yeah. is depressing. Yeah. Mm. Let's see. I got just a couple over here. Here's Brian playing. This is in the England side of Epcot, if it ever loads. So we've moved out of Hollywood Studios and on to Epcot. As one does. As one does. And so another thing about Disney here is that, geez, this thing is slow. My side is way slow. Christmas there it is. slow internet. Do you do? Um, another thing is, oh, and here's a picture of my mother and I. Um, so I 
um, we have gotten, you know, we've gone a couple times, so we've collected these little ornaments. So there's like these traditional little ornaments. This is like the gold little Cinderella looking Ooh. thing. Ooh, these are on your tree. You should know these. I do know. Oh, well. I'm planning it out for the audience. I appreciate that. And here for is the fans one. At home. Obviously, we were there in the year 2000. Here's one from the year 2000. This thing is like heavy. We have to put it like underneath a branch to like support the thing. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know if this says it or not, but. If you, <laughs> Let's do this. Says, Look at that young man. Yeah. He was a young man then. Um, this is, it doesn't say what year, but you remember having these when you were a kid? They used to sell these and Mickey they're Mugs. selling them again. With hot cocoa in them. They, this, now they sell them with hot cocoa. Or, you know. Oh, no, it was chocolate puddings or something in there. You had to scoop oh, it yeah, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, because we would eat them with a spoon. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, I kept my Mickey mug. I forgot about I that. It was that, it was frozen hot chocolate. I remember my grandma having these, like, from... I, I, she'd never been to Disney, but I guess from like Mickey Mouse Club kind of stuff or whatever. Crazy. But, and then, if you are a coffee drinker, uh, Starbucks is in all the parks now. And so Starbucks has these little ornaments every year. And so they have them for each park. And so I have them for like three or four of the parks. Um, this is like the hardest thing to stand in line for because the Starbucks line is usually out the door. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll have a coffee. But I really just want the little ornament guy. So this one's from Animal Kingdom. We do love Animal Kingdom. I love Animal Kingdom. Um... As someone that has a degree in museum studies, Animal Kingdom does all kinds of amazing things for their animals. It's not just yeah. um, a zoo. It is preservation and conservation, and they give back, and they share resources. And, and if you have Disney+, Plus, there's a really good oh, yeah. uh, Josh Gad-hosted series about the animals in Animal Kingdom. It's really well done. It's it, it's it's well run. There are aquariums, too. Everything is really well run there. It, it's cutting edge kind of research and stuff on animals and um, it's all psychological barriers instead of fences, which is another big thing in museums um, and zoos. Um, you know, like a giraffe, if you put it around a moat, won't walk because it won't step down when it can't see. So build a moat around giraffes so you don't have to put a fence up, that kind of stuff. Um, and what animals can mix and can't and it's really cool. So the other thing is, is that if you know me at all, I collect advent calendars like a crazy person. Um, I think I... Was that a big nod? Yes. <laughs> I think this year I only have 17 calendars up. Um, only? Only 17. That means there's more that aren't up? There are a few that I didn't bother to put up. Um, but I do have about 17 of them. And so um, I um, have collected Disney calendars when we go, advent calendars. And so I have this one that is like the Disney like princesses and stuff. And so you open it up and like Frozen came out the year I got this one. So there's like a little Frozen tree and here's Elsa. But then you also get like Sven. How cute is that? <laughs> and then I have um, this one that has like the little Disney baby guys on them. And so here's Stitch in a Santa hat. And he's like Velcro and he sticks onto the days of the month. Tracy's like, you need to step up your game. Only 17. Pitiful. That's pitiful. I know. I know. And here's another one I have. This is Minnie from one of them. And here's another one I have that's Mickey from a different one. So you can see they're different sizes ones and they're different shapes. And I think I only have four. Four Disney ones. That is kind of sad. We should work on that. Should we? Yeah. Should we work on I that? I think that's kind of slacky. So okay. We'll Disney. work on that. Oh, and Brian's um, doing his guys. Look, I found these. <laughs> Nothing to do with Disney, but are they cute? Heat Miser and Snow Miser. I love that show. Yeah, A Year Without Santa Claus is one of my all time favorites. Sure. <laughs> I think it's the only one of those that I actually own. Like, I have it. I own it. You own it? Oh, here's one of the funny things we did one year while we were there. Brian's like, we. <laughs> Hold on. Come on, interwebs. There we go. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this. Like, Brian's like, we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We? Mine won't show on my side. Oh, there it goes, finally. All you gotta know is once I can see it, they can see it. Nuh uh, because I'm looking right at it. Uh huh. You're. <laughs> once I can see it, they can see it. But I'm behind. I can't see but it. But we have to start talking when I can see but it. But I can see it. Can't or it's gonna be another 10 second delay before <laughs> they hear you talking. Anyway, um, we did the. Um, these little things where you just, you know, get your photo taken and they Photoshop you in there. So, but it was kind of cute. We look pretty good as Han and Leia. Yeah, it was fun. It's definitely fun. It was fun. Well, I look, my hair looks weird. I got the wrong eyes. I do not have Princess Leia eyes. I got big old almond eyes. Is that like a 
the song. She got Princess Leia. Leia eyes. Eyes. Oops, that's my bad. Come on. See, it's the internet. It's not me. Yes, do what I say. Don't back talk. When me. he says you need to reverse the photos next time, Brian can be Leia and Christy can be Han. That's true. That's a good idea. I'd, I'd probably make a pretty good Leia. Well, that's a movie. We probably don't need a movie. These are movies. He was like, if you thought the internet was slow with the photos, wait till you try to play movies. Yeah. Wait, wait. So, oh, I gotta shrink this. It's too embigonated. You won't be able to see nothing. So here are some. How's that cocoa holding out? You need more cocoa? It's good. You finish it up yet? Is it too cold now? It's starting to cool off. Um, so five years, we uh, were in. That was the Heathrow tree, you're right. <laughs> it was uh, apparently a video, though, not just a photo. So I still have oh, the right. I think it was like a live photo or something. Yeah. Because it had the crazy lights on it. It does that little swirly thing. Um, so for five years, we were in Oman for Christmas. And so we started our own traditions and um, did fun stuff for the students. Uh, we... Uh, Got because you know the square old people were like, I guess we just won't have Christmas while we're in the Middle East. I'm like, f that. We're bringing Christmas to the masses. Well, and you know, we don't care what religion you are, or whatever. It's about Santa, and it's about fun, and it's about community and that kind of stuff. And that's what it is in the Middle East too. They don't care. Everybody's like, oh, it's so sad. You were in the Middle East for Christmas, and they probably don't do anything. Shit, they go crazy. They do all kinds of stuff because they think we're crazy, and they totally get into it. And yep. we have lots of tourists come, so. Speaking of getting into it, do you have any pictures of the gingerbread house contest? I do, now that you mention it. So every resort in Oman builds a gingerbread house. And the contest is which resort builds the biggest, most grand, most elaborate gingerbread house. So if, you, if you've been to Disney in Florida, Grand Floridian is famous for their giant gingerbread house. And I can tell you, these ones in Oman, they either rival it or exceed it. They are life size. They go all out. Uh, Whitney says, 45 minutes later, it's starting to cool off. <laughs> Tracy says, he heated it with lava this time. <laughs> our microwave is like lava, man. Oh my gosh. 30 seconds yeah. in I'm it. I'm pretty so, sure our microwave is illegal. It explodes. Yeah. So here is a um, season, couple of seasons ago, one of the houses. Sue and Horton. And Noah and Audra. And I'm trying to find another one. Here is another one. Um, that one was at, where was that one at? That's the um, the Crown Royal, the Crown Plaza. Plaza. Crown Royal's liquor, sweetheart. I want some Crown Royal for Christmas. This next one's at Crown Plaza too, for sure. If it ever gets there. Did it get there? Yeah. So that one's also at Crown Plaza. That one's a smaller one. They have different sizes at Crown Plaza. Crown Plaza is the one that's right next to the... Um, it's like walking distance yeah, for us. Yeah, big site. Um, I thought I had one more. Where'd it go? Hold on, I'm looking. Oh, here's another one. This one is at um, the Hilton. You mean the Hilton? The Hilton. Hilton. Yeah, that was two years ago. Yep. And... There it is. With Santa with the saxophone. Yeah. You gotta and love then it. You gotta like... No, seriously, though. You gotta look at this, guys. Santa has a saxophone. And then you can walk inside that gingerbread house, and there's like a display of Western Christmas things inside. And treats. There's treats in there, too. Hold on. When this one comes in, you will see not just Santa, but... That's right. Santa Brian and chilling Brian. with Santa. You better believe it. Santa's my homie. Here is one at... He's a jolly um, old elf. This is at um, Rotana. This is Mariah trying to eat the one at Rotana. I mean, so if you look at the... What's, which this thing loads. If you look at the size of the squares compared to her head, it gives you an <laughs> idea how big these pieces of gingerbread are. Yes. It's huge. I know. I wish I wish Chow Time and Randy was here to talk about the one at Grand Flow where they go all the time, but... Yeah, that one is impressive. Let's see. I think I have another one. Let me find Oh, Dawn is rating us. Hey, Dawn. Thank you so much for the raid. Great to see you with 43 viewers. Holy smokes. That's amazing. So um, thanks for the raid, guys. What we're doing tonight is we're having our 
sort of once a year holiday party here. Uh, I'm drawing Heat Miser and Snow Miser. And Christy is showing photos from some of our Christmas adventures from around the world. Right now she's showing photos from the Middle East. So uh, we really appreciate the raid. Thank you guys so much. And Don, if you want to uh, drop your social uh, info in the chat, you are more than welcome to. And everyone, please follow Don. Don is an amazing artist, and we raid her channel from time to time uh, to see some of the sketches and covers and things that she's doing. But thank you so much, and welcome everyone. Welcome raiders. <laughs> we are talking gingerbread houses right now. So these are giant gingerbread houses in the Middle East. So like life size. Dr. Christy here, she's an archaeologist. When we go to the Middle East, the resorts there have these competitions during the holidays of who can build the biggest and craziest gingerbread house. And so we're looking at some of those photos right now. This one is at the um, gingerbread houses. And, you know, these are real. Like, you see little kids come up and, like, lick them and try to pull pieces off and stuff. But I'm not thinking you should really do that. But um, um, this, we were talking about a couple of the resorts uh, that are near the archaeological site we work on. And so we've been to three of them. Um, this one is called the Albali Resort, which is the name of our site. And so it's next door to the site. But this guy's got a snowman on the roof. How cute is that? And Tom Durante says, that's an epic gingerbread house. Yeah, at least it's not an empty room, true enough. <laughs> Let's see. I think I have one more in here. That's a pretty big one. Um, if I can find him, where did he go? More gingerbread. More gingerbread. Or you can show us Christmas trees or whatever else. So, oh, here's another little one. Here's a small one with Brian crouched down beside it. Oh, look, Christy has to hydrate. Uh-oh. Drinking old Santee eggnog today. That's right. We are getting our Christmas on. We hope you guys have your favorite Christmas beverage as well. And join us for our holiday party. Oh, there's a little baby gingerbread house. That's not a big one. No, this is the little one at Rotana. Um, Rotana also does these fantastic little snacks. They like to... Um, we go every year, obviously. And so... They're always showing us what their display cabinet is full of, of Western snacks <laughs> every year. Their, their Christmas traditions. And Boopley Quinn says, leave this one while I eat. <laughs> you guys just missed, we were showing some photos from our Christmas adventures at Disney too. So we're kind of going around the world here tonight and different Christmas pictures and stories and things. The... Um the, the idea of Western stuff like the Yule log and um, putting little Santas on things and they think it's hysterical. And so they're always trying to every year like up the game about different stuff that they can do. Yeah. Vex says the snacks are so good. Yeah, and all the resorts will have their own Santa Claus. And I mean, it kind of puts what we do here to shame sometimes. <laughs> Here's a little Santa cheesecake. Um, we go there during for Christmas morning. We go here and we have cocoa and food, snacks, mostly cake for breakfast. And then we go to the beach afterwards. Here's a big old display. This is from Rotana and their snack cabinet that we like to raid. If it ever loads. If it ever loads. The interwebs is so slow. There it is. Cute. It's a pretty gingerbread house. There's some stuff on there, man. Think about all the work those decorators do. Some of the hardest part is picking what we're going to eat. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> That's right. You're like, what am I going to eat for Which Christmas? Which thing? Here's our one of the Yule logs. Uh, you can see the humidity on the glass because it's probably still like 100 degrees. That's but... <laughs> right. Yeah, it's at least 90 to 100, but it's Christmas, so whatever. You just get in the mood and go for it. Another funny thing is that every year I buy the students that go on the dig with us a Christmas cake. And these things are horrible <laughs> and i mean horrible and they are decorated in crazy ways and so and when she said crazy like sometimes there will be a giraffe on the cake <laughs> you just never know so we look for the like saddest and funniest ones and then we take photos and then we always bring one home and um they're crazy flavors and the icing is i mean they're disgusting you can't hardly even choke one piece down but they're totally worth it because of the, the decorations, the decorations yeah. on them that are so bad. And so they have these little plastic decorations on them and we take them, we save them every year. Then we like put, we tape these decorations to the wall for our Christmas holiday spirit stuff. And sometimes the translations get really bad. So oh, like yeah. the reindeers are called like Siam horse yeah. sometimes. And the stuff Siam like that. horse. Here's the Christmas display. The Lulu is, um, the Lulu is like the Walmart, uh, in the, where we live in Salala. And so the Lulu has Christmas displays. 
And so this is their cake decorating display. And you can see like, you know, why is it blue? And are those mountains and snow? These people never seen snow. They don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. That's right. They've never seen snow. The only Santa Claus they've seen is, you know, on a movie or something on, you know, satellite. They don't know. But they do their best. And so the whole little, like, mall that they're in has different displays. And so one year, I think this was the year before last, they had, you could buy your own Santa suit, <laughs> which was the funniest thing I've ever seen. One size fits all. <laughs> Santa is only one size. Fat? Is that what size Santa is? I don't really think so, based on the outfit. Portly? Portly Santa. <laughs> Did he load yet? There he is. Yep, there's Santa. Oh, and I had the Siam horses. Here's some Siam horses. It literally says on the display, Siam horse. And you're like, wait, you mean reindeer? <laughs> Ooh, he's looking very frosty over there. I'm trying. That's a good blue. Thank you. Here's some more Siam horses. Yeah, so that's supposed to be reindeer. They could be hyena. I don't know. <laughs> They're not hyenas. I mean, maybe. They're fuzzy. I'm just saying. Here, when... Now, these look like little demon ones. These guys are a little bit crazy. But you can see that they also have the big sales, just like it here, Christmas sales. Big sale. 70% off, because we marked it up 110%. <laughs> And then there's um oh there yeah those are the little demon reindeer these yeah. are the creepy ones there is a whole mm -hmm. like home improvement store that brian and i find hysterical because some of the things that are in it you don't even know what they are but they have good window display sometimes I'm trying to find the window display i just saw it well while i look for that here's another one so outside of the really 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 fancy resort that's next door to our dig site um the Albalid Resort, they had their um, staff dressed up as Santa. Catherine redeemed. Christy tells a childhood oh, story. God. And I think it has to be a childhood Christmas story tonight. Um, I'm pretty sure that's in the rules. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Was there a, a an especially happy or sad Christmas in your childhood? I don't know. Okay, I got, I got. Is there a best present Christmas? Or I, a... I got one that's, um, I got one that you have that you hate. Oh, okay. <laughs> not my stepsister, but that's not funny. That is funny to me, but maybe not to anyone. <laughs> um, so, I, I have mentioned that. So this is going to be Christy tells a childhood story. Those of you that are new, Christy had quite a different childhood for most people. She grew up in a house with no running water, no electricity. They only ate what they could catch and hunt and that sort of but thing. But I'm not old. Let's just be clear. This so is not here, like the 1800s. No, it's just they. she grew up in a very strange child, in a childhood. Rural area. That's right. Okay, so here we go. Christy tells a childhood story. Christmas, go Christy. Are you going to interrupt me again? No. Oh, okay. In your own time. Thank you. And Brian's leaving. Whenever you're ready. Thank you. So, um... We were very poor, as I said, when we grew up, and um, I we lived in this house that, as I said, I've said before, that was like four rooms, and um, the four rooms were like literally a square, and then there was like this really steep staircase, and there are two half rooms that are half attic rooms, so that's literally like a, you slept in a triangle, um, and they were my parents had one and I had one, and then the downstairs was just four square rooms, so uh, downstairs um, is where the Christmas tree was, obviously, and the stove. And so it was really cold um, one winter, most winters, and um, it was like super cold. So we had to sleep downstairs because that's the only heat in the house was that one fireplace that was in the kitchen. And so we're actually sleeping in the room that's next to the kitchen because the kitchen wasn't big enough really for us to all sleep in there, the three of us. So we're sleeping in the room next to the kitchen and we hardly had any furniture. I didn't realize it until I started thinking back about it from telling these stories that... Um, it's, uh, we had almost no furniture in this house and it never really dawned on me before that we didn't. We had like a couch and a chair and a table and four chairs. And then there was no other furniture in the house except for there was this like a really old sewing machine that my grandma gave my mom that I'm not really thinking she knew how to use. But anyway. And you had six Susies. And I had a lot of cats. But anyway, so we were in this room um, sleeping on the floor and there's no furniture there, but, um, Anyway, I wasn't allowed to do anything or move or talk or do anything because Santa was coming because it was Christmas Eve. And I wasn't allowed to get up and I wasn't allowed to do anything. 
And so I kept thinking like, oh, oh, I have to go to the bathroom. And they're like, no, you don't. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have to go to the bathroom so I could get up and see if Santa had come yet because you'd have to walk right by the tree in order to go outside, to go to the outhouse, to go to the bathroom. And they're like, no, mm -mm, not happening. And I was like, okay, fine. And so then I needed another blanket or something. You know, I kept coming with all these things. And finally, you know, I'm sure it's probably like 10 o'clock. But as a kid, you know, you felt like it was going forever. So I finally go to sleep. And I wake up the next morning, um, and the parents are already up and gone. And so I jump out of bed and uh, run into the other room, and we're very poor. And so there was like three presents under the tree that are for me. That's a big deal. And so one of them, typically the gift from Santa isn't wrapped, and then you have a stocking from Santa, and then you get presents from your family that are wrapped. And so unwrapped is this box thing, wooden thing, that I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. And I'm like, is this for me? And my parents are like, yes. And I'm like, what is it? You know, I'm like five. I was very sarcastic even then. And so I was like, what the precocious. hell is it? Precocious. Christy was precocious. I was precocious. And so anyway, um, it's like this wooden box thing. And my mom is like, it's a dollhouse. And I'm like, what? And she's like, well, we have to fix it up. Santa didn't want to finish it. He wanted you to participate and get to help decorate. And even at five, I'm like, that sounds like bullshit to me. So, <laughs> but what it was is they couldn't afford anything else. And so it was like a kit. And so it was this, it was actually quite big. It was probably a couple of feet um, tall or yeah, at least a foot and a half tall. But it was um, just this wood box. And it came with like these little shingles you had to glue on and you had to like put all the stuff in and you had to do all this crap. And I'm thinking, this seems like a lot of work for a dollhouse. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, where's the doll? And they're like, well, you'll have to pick that out later when you get it set up. And I'm like, mm, that seems sketchy. And then I'm like, well, where's the furniture? And then they're like, well, you can make it. And I'm like, I'm not making crap. My dad's not that talented. So who's making the furniture for the dollhouse? <laughs> so anyway, I was very disgruntled about this dollhouse. But it was a big deal that my family could get together to get this dollhouse, first of all, at all. And, you know, of course, as a kid, I had seen like at Walmart or whatever it was. We didn't have Walmart then, but at whatever it was, some store there was like this pink Barbie house or whatever. And I was like, that's what I want. And so in my head, that's what I want. And I get this wooden box that I have to put together. And I was like, not having it. And I was like five years old. And my mother was getting very frustrated with the uh, lack of appreciation that I had. And, and then like my gifts from my parents. They were probably excited about it. And you like totally poo-hooed it. I did. And then so my parents, the gifts from my parents were like socks and like a sweater because they spent all the money getting this dollhouse thing. And I was like, shit. <laughs> They were like, come on, we did our best here. And I was like, yeah, sorry. Years later, now I get it as an adult that, okay, we put all of our money towards that thing. But as a kid, I was like, that's that's. Well, as a kid, it. you thought that was from Santa. Yeah, and, and also it wasn't cutting it. I was like, Santa kind of cheaped out this year. This isn't right. I wanted like a done dollhouse. I don't want a dollhouse I have to make. <laughs> and for the record, I never finished that dollhouse. They're never. like, hey, Christy, it's a DIY dollhouse. Yeah, that wasn't a thing when I was a kid. <laughs> and it never got finished. I think I painted it. And that was it. <laughs> That's yes. so funny. So there you go. A Not childhood a story, but... childhood story. It is a good story. A childhood Christmas oh, story. Hydrate. Thanks, Bex. From Christy. Thank you guys for the hydrate. Cheers to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. We're so glad to see you tonight. Our last TNT of 2020. Mm. I've uh, moved on to the... Really good scotch. I was like, let me guess. It's just whiskey uh, now. <laughs> Jesus. That's some good I mean, Santa Claus. What? Uh, what is that one? This is in, in honor of the Three Kings. Oh, yeah. This it's, should be good. It's the Three Woods. It's the Akatoshan Three Wood. <laughs> so. I think that is loosely correlated. Yeah. I mean, I think the Scots believe in the Three Kings. You think? Mm-hmm. Okay. A festive Christmas glass, or you guys can see the yeah, same, same one, one Christie's got. I, have, I bought a four pack. The double old fashioned. Don is heading out. Oh, good to see you. Hey, Don, thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate it, especially on our holiday party night. Oh, thank you so much, Don. Have a good one. Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year's. Bye. What are you doing? Oh, paint. That's right, paint for details and stuff. All right, so the, as I said, I make the students participate in Christmas whether they want to or not. So That's right. Christy lays down the law about right. Christmas. You must get a... She doesn't let anybody... like. It's not one of these, like, you're going to get a gift and not get anybody else something. She's like, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Um, 
Happy 2021. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, as we say in Arabic. Um, so I make the students um, buy one white elephant gift for someone and we like exchange and we do like dirty Santa kind of thing. And then um, I slash Santa fill stockings for everyone and everybody gets one gift from Santa. And so Brian and I go shopping um, while they're off digging in the dirt. I'm like, oh, I have to go run errands. And um, then Brian and I go shopping. And then we get the Christmas cake and we buy donuts or something. We buy stuff for breakfast, um, which is ironic because then we go to uh, Rotana and eat that fancy breakfast that we were just talking about. And then we go to Mirbat and we go to the beach all day and we eat snacks, what we call gas station snacks. So we get our lunch out of the gas station. And then, oh, there's Monique. Hi, Monique. Hey, Monique, good to see you. Happy holidays to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you're so, having a very, very holiday season. And then we go to Chinese for dinner. So we eat all day long, pretty much. That's right. But, um, but we do a lot of hiking and running around. We that's true, we do. So part of the deal was is that when we first got there, the students had to um, wrap the gifts, obviously. You had to wrap it. Well, now... Because the Lulu is like Walmart, like really, you can buy wrapping paper and all that kind of stuff. But I used to take that stuff so that it would have they would have something wrapped. Because otherwise, you had to invent wrapping paper. Right. The Western influence is there now. Is very much there now. Yeah. Especially, Which is good. Which yeah, is good. I mean, you know, it's 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 fine, but it was very weird the first couple of years. Like, um, people would have to wrap things in like a palm thong. Here, here is one. You can't tell. It's going to load in just a second. But you can't really tell from this photo. But um, this is a package that this girl, Vanessa, um, she made. I'm getting ready to show you the one she made. The one she's opening is actually out of a dig bag. So somebody just stole a dig bag um, that we put artifacts in and called that wrapping. I was like, Belongs hey. in the museum. Yeah, that's, that's sad. But she, Vanessa, that girl made this one, which is woven palm fronds. So she went out and picked banana leaves, palm fronds, off the banana tree and wove them around this package and made this package for Charlotte. So how pretty, this is pretty impressive. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive, yeah. I mean, that takes some skill. Now, Vanessa works um, as an, um, an instructor for the British Museum. So she teaches um, essentially history and archeology span and all that kind of stuff. Um, she does tours like a docent for the muse British Museum. And so uh, she has some skills, but anyway, it was hysterical. By the way, she got me the best present ever. She ever? got me rubber duckies, well, pretty close, but these rubber ducky guys, but it's Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. How funny is that? <laughs> that was my gift one year from Vanessa for Christmas. Obviously not bought in Oman. She brought that in. Those are some good historical duckies. It was historical duckies. And so here's just some photos of us opening our Christmas gifts. Um, a couple of super funny ones. So, if they ever load. I see, I see pictures. Yeah, there's Krista. Dr. Crystal Lewis. Mm -hmm. Now, are we showing Bex or are we not showing Bex? Um, we showed Bex earlier in one photo. Oh, okay. Um, I didn't know if there was like a rule or something. I was there's not a rule. I just happened to pull photos randomly. She was in one earlier. Okay, so this. You're saying, why is there a photo of Hello Kitty toilet paper? Toilet paper! First of all, why is there Hello Kitty toilet paper is the next question. So one year, one of the early years... Uh, that we were there for Christmas, we have moved to a new house and the staff is not up on Western ways and they never have enough toilet paper in this house. It's kind of always... like America in 2020. We're always fighting over toilet paper and we're always telling them to buy more toilet paper. And the toilet paper is like super thin. And you have to understand that they don't use toilet paper. Right. So they don't understand why we would want toilet paper. Right. They think it's disgusting. Why would you put your hand there with paper or not? It's disgusting. Thank you for the hydrates. Oh, hydrate. Thanks, Quinch Press. Thank you, Quinch. So anyway, they don't really understand toilet paper. So they never give us enough. And then the bathrooms are these little squares that have like a, a shower head and the toilet and the sink. And there's no like curtains or doors or anything on the shower. So the water gets everywhere. And then they come in to clean and they just spray the shower head everywhere. And that's how they clean. So your toilet paper gets ruined almost every time they clean the bathroom, which isn't really that often. But anyway, <laughs> um, so toilet paper becomes a big commodity. So one of the early years that we were there in their, our new house, I found, um, it wasn't actually this, it was um, doggies. They were had dogs on them and they were quilted. It was two-ply toilet paper. With paw prints. With paw prints on it. And um, they were 20 bucks a four-pack. And there were eight of us. 
So I spent $40 buying uh, eight rolls of toilet paper and Santa snuck them into their rooms on Christmas Eve. <laughs> and so everybody's pillow, they got a roll of paw print toilet paper, two ply toilet paper. Ooh, Everyone got fancy. one. And it was like the best gift ever. People were like ooing and aahing and hoarding them. And like they would only like put them out occasionally and they would hide them in their closets or whatever and then use them again. <laughs> Okay, it's sad, but it was one of the best gifts ever, finding paw print two-ply toilet paper. That was right. The, when you can't get it, it seems pretty it's impressive. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Here's another great one. This is super impressive. This is a Bex one. And Brian, looking adorable. Oh, is this a team Christmas uniform photo coming up? Kind of. All right. It's just you, not team, but yes. Oh, okay. If it ever comes. There you are. Oh, Team Christmas Unicorn. Team Christmas Unicorn. So explain, Brian. Well, um, Bex and I were digging together, and so we dubbed ourselves Team Christmas Unicorn. And then, uh, because they thought it was funny, they got me unicorn slippers for Christmas. Can you see those? They are adorable. And Sparkly, he's wearing... glitter unicorn slippers. And Brian had to wear them around the house. Had he to. Still has them. They're Want, in our closet. Wanted to. And he's wearing his Stormtrooper Santa That's PJs. Right. I looked fabulous. And his little crown from his uh, the poppers that we get. That's right. we get Party poppers. popper. Yeah. Heck it yeah. was unicorn because we found one goat horn. That's right. We found a goat horn that we dubbed a unicorn. Yeah. Unicorn, goat, whatever. It's just history. Doesn't matter if they're facts or not. I've seen if Bex is in this one. Oh, Bex must have been taking this photo because <laughs> it's says, the same year. Whitney says Katie has something like that. They're adorbs. That's right. Totally adorable. She parks them by my bed. Or by the <laughs> bed. Sorry. Look at all that candy. It was a good haul. Oh, Nick's like, it's cute. It was cute. Here is another. Um, I got toys for everybody. And um, this thing, I wish I had now. I left it in Oman so that we could play with it next year and then COVID hit. But... Is it the penguin game? It is the penguin game. It's like a penguin roller coaster. It was awesome. So you can't really tell, but down here at the bottom. I think we posted a video to Facebook Live when yeah. you got that. Yeah. So this little guy down at the bottom here is a penguin. And Bex is like, that was the best. And so he goes around this track and he's like, he like walks funny. He like rocks. And then it eventually gets onto these little stairs and the stairs make him go up the stairs. So he like escalates up the stairs. What do you call that when it's the... Yeah, it's like an escalator. Yeah. yeah, but there's a special word for it. Like the Luxor has the one. The Inclinator. Is that what it's called? So it's called Luxor. So it's the same thing. And so it moves it sideways. And then he comes up and he slides around. Then he goes, ka -tink, ka -tink, ka -tink. And he goes, ch -ch 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 -ch. and he slides. It was the funnest thing ever. Yeah, you could play with it for hours. I got that at the Five Real store, which is about 10 bucks, but totally worth it. Here's Krista and I in our matching Christmas kitty sweaters. I got us matching Christmas kitty key sweaters. Christmas kitty. Krista has two cats as well. So what do you think, guys? I got the uh, heat miser. How cute is that? And the snow miser. Drawn up and painted up while we were talking here. Kind of simple and cartoony, but they're fun. They are fun. It's my, one of my favorite of the like holiday. Ooh, heat miser, snow miser. It's the heat miser. All right, you guys got your matching Christmas kitties. I see that. How cute are we? Beck says, I like them a lot. Adorbs. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. It's slow to load. So one year, um, was this last year? I don't know if Beck's got this one, if it was the year before Beck's. But Brian, Mr. Artiste, um, made a little drawings for every one of us that was fun yeah oh you guys can't tell though but it's on blue paper yeah it's on blue paper you can't yeah. tell it on that one eh, it looks pretty washed yeah. out on there but... mm. it's stitch my favorite and so he did different ones oh hey christy if we were to make you a scarf what colors would you want oh we what colors would i, I picked out martini racing colors earlier today oh for myself that makes sense did mm -hmm. they know what martini racing colors i showed are? a photo as oh, a matter of okay, fact because not everybody knows Martini Racing Colors. I mean, I do, but not everybody does. Um, my colors. I would want it to be... Um, um, wow, that's a tough call. Um, I had to think about what I liked versus what I would actually wear. Yeah, that's true, too. I was thinking about what I would actually wear more mm -hmm, of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I actually wear more of, like, earth tones. 
Like I was saying like maroons and forest greens and stuff like that for you. Yes, exactly. I wear like browns and greens and maroon. Exactly what he said. It's like he's a color person in those. But yes, I wear more earth tones than anything else, really. But I like... I like like purple and green, but I don't really. Know that <laughs> Quinch Press says I don't know the Martini Racing colors. It's okay. I shared a photo on the earlier stream of what they look like. Olive green and pimento red, like martinis. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I would not kick that out. Yeah, that's not that's not necessarily wrong. I like golf racing t- colors too. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd wear baby blue around. But I like the golf colors. Yeah, but Martini. Or how about camel, camel trophy colors? I don't know. The that bright I'd wear yellow, yellow around you. I like that. We could talk racing colors all the time. <laughs> um, purple is the best color, says Quinch Pressed. Well, I do like purple. I like a dark purple. I'm more into the jammy purples, the raspberries. Oh my god! And the, you and your jam. The again. plums and stuff like we that. We were teaching class the other day. We had to hear about his jam. Jam. You have to give colors a name so people can understand what you're talking about. Jam. All right. Well, I'm almost out of photos. I got just a couple more here. Well, while Christy's loading the last photos, you guys, we want to hear like. Some of your Christmas memories, you know, favorite Christmas cocktail, favorite Christmas gift, favorite Christmas movie. Oh, here's one of my favorite Christmas gifts from Oman. Look at him. How cute is he? (laughs) Oh, he's adorable. It's a really cute Christmas camel. Christmas camel. He's got a red hump. He's got a red hump. (laughs) You got a red hump. (laughs) Uh, Quench Press says, as far as naming colors, Aubergine, aubergine, eggplant, purple, nice and dark. I like that. And Bex is like, I gave that to you. I know, that's why I brought it. <laughs> Which is the current color of my hair. Oh, we haven't seen that, Quench. You need to throw some pictures up on Discord. Yeah, I didn't show you my purple hair either, but that's Christy's childhood story when I got kicked out. And for those who missed it earlier, I am wearing my Star Wars Christmas sweater somewhere in there. As he rolls around. I'm wearing my reindeers, but I can't move mine. My camera around it doesn't move, but they're reindeer. How cute. It's from Anthropology. You two could have one. Um, here's a cute little display. This is from the Dubai airport, I think. Mm. That's right. Duty free. Duty free Dubai. They know how to get you with the Christmas decorations. There's another one, too. They're like, come buy a giant Toblerone that you can't get through customs. Right. Or more likely the bottle of whiskey. Or the... Uh, that you have to drink on the plane. Somewhere, though, you have the Kinder Egg guy, the oh, pilot, yeah. with the goggles and the wings and the whole deal. I did. I bought him and, and he's carried like, him. He's like two feet tall. And I carried him home. It's nuts. Here's another little guy we got. Um, we got this guy in Munich. We were at Munich. Munchen. In Munchen. On the way. Oh, my gosh. This is the cutest damn oh, reindeer ever. See how cute he is? He goes jingle jangle. But you gotta show him what he does, really. But I don't. I felt you probably have to show him what he does. But so I'll show him on my side. If you pull his tail, he goes, and he walks. It is the best thing ever. Okay, hold on, guys. Don't walk through the paint. Okay, wait. Where is he at? Okay, let me get him lined up. You gotta pull his tail. Ah, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I just love him. I got him at the Munich airport. He's the best. He's I bought so all cute. kinds of crap at the Munich airport before we ever even got to Oman. <laughs> yeah, those Germans, they're good at Christmas. <laughs> Did you hear they, they closed down all the Christmas villages this year? Because of COVID, that's sad. That is first sad. time since the 1400s. Wow. Speaking of the first time, we're going to have the Christmas star. The first time since 1200 and something. Yeah. On Monday, I think. So watch out for that. Monday? Is that right? The 21st? Yeah, yeah. I guess it is. Quinch Press says, that would mean I'd have to get on Discord. Love <laughs> our community here. Hate the Discord software. Yeah, Discord, it like works really well, but the interface is not the most friendly. It's for not sure. Pretty. But Bex can help you out with that. I'm She's a Discord find... master. I thought I had another picture of Bex here, but maybe I don't. Maybe I already showed the only one I have. Oh, the Heat Miser looks really good through the scotch. Like it looks like he's on fire. <laughs> um... You're on fire. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. I'm Mr. Sun. Nope, no Bex in that one. That I'm was Mr. the year before Bex. I'm Mr. Heat Miser. I'm Mr. 101. Jeez, nobody's been paying for you to sing. Yet, here you go. <laughs> uh, Tomcat says, Discord is all I've got left. One of my favorite Christmas memories is not having gas, is not having a gas leak in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. 
I'm on Discord, Discord, Discord. I'm just talking into the void, void, void. <laughs> That's funny. Bex is like, I'm happy to help anybody on Discord. Here is another mm. famous uh, Christmas present. Papa Rodi! Oh, Papa Rodi. God dang, I miss Papa Rodi. Papa Rodi. He's the father of all buns. That's it. That's what it says on the sign. Papa so Papa Rodi is a made-up fake Italian bakery. From? From like Thailand, Thailand. or Malaysia or something. Thailand. Yeah. Totally invented. There is no Papa Rodi. It's not from Italy. It's so good. But it's, says. but it's so good. It is a bun that they roll in butter and then they put a crispy bit over top. And there's also butter in the middle. And that then they there's melt. butter inside. Or you can get chocolate or you can get hazelnut or you can get Honey cheese. Honey or cheese. Yeah, cheese yeah. is weird. But it is ooey gooey delicious buttery goodness. And then it's at a coffee shop so you get a nice little cappuccino or something with it. Oh god I miss Papa Hey so Evan much. good to see you. You're here just hey, for the, just for the end of our holiday party, but very good to see you. Hope you're having a very very happy holidays. So this is another one of Brian's famous gifts from the girls. That's right. And this one, Mr. Miller. This one is the sexual harassment panda. Please show us on the bear where somebody was inappropriate to you. <laughs> But we decided that it should be a panda because it sounds better. That's right. And so we put a panda mask on him. Well, I didn't. The girls did and gave it to Brian. <laughs> what does this say? Give me a hug and let me... Let, <laughs> I'll let you taste my Tim Tams. Oh, Tim Tams. That's a imported candy. Tim Tams are cookies. Date cookies. Yuck. I think that was like a white elephant gift or something. Yeah. Well, let's hope it wasn't a real one. <laughs> we, you know, you're digging in the dirt all day. You get bored. These things come up. Here's a lovely outfit here that uh, Rachel's wearing. If it ever loads. And the internet is loading. Nice star hat there. Here's a very crooked palm tree. Oh yeah, the star hat. That was like a gift package. Yeah, Krista used that. And as she a, turned it as into a hat. That was pretty good. That was a good one. Very Lady of Liberty. <laughs> Nice little crooked Christmas tree there. Yeah. That's at the mall. And then, last but not least, there's two last little things here. Again, if they ever load. <laughs> Bex is trying to help on Discord. She's like, I've been falling down at my job. <laughs> it's because she's been so focused on school. Oh my god, grading. I tried to take points off on Sean's final assignment, but I couldn't find anything to pick on. Evan says, I just stopped by to say hi. I really like the drawings. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, I did the heat miser and the snow miser. I'm Mr. Snow Miser. I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Cold. I'm Mr. Snow Miser. Press, I know how to get around Discord now, but the amount of frustration it took to that point makes me boil with anger just thinking about Discord. <laughs> yeah, these things happen. So these are Hunjars, which is the national dagger of Oman. And, uh, Can you the, imagine having a national dagger? You're like, this is my national dagger. Traditional. Traditional. Each each tribe has their own design. Um, the handles are made out of specific things. They're J-shaped knives. They wear them on belts. Tracy says, Sean wanted to be upset but by that, but she has nothing. Yes, exactly. I wanted to be. I was like, what can I nitpick on? I couldn't think of anything. It was very annoying. Um, that's, uh, Bex is talking about Discord now. Yeah, and Tracy says, I have McShawn and Tomcat here being held hostage. Are you or they? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bring, no. Are you going to show Omani Sweets? Did they bring this, this, just the box? Oh. Did they bring uh, the dog and the cat to you, Tracy? That's nice of them. You can have a big menagerie there with yours. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Omani sweets are disgusting. They're not disgusting. They're disgusting. But they're, a, you know, you can only have a few. And it's an acquired taste. They're gelatinous and they're little cubes and they come in like pistachio and coffee and date. And they are disgu uh, Excuse Tracy me, disgusting. Tracy says that we have the dog and the cat and your bells were driving the dog crazy. Oh, let me do it again then. Is that helpful? <laughs> you, have to, like, you have to ASMR it, right? I did. <laughs> Tracy like, says, nice, thanks. Nice background, Ryan. Thanks. I want to be festive. Yeah. He is so festive. All right. Speaking of dogs. One little doggy we found. If he ever loads. Is it going to be a street dog? 
It's in the... I think it was in the airport, actually. <laughs> when he says, gelatinous cubes are dangerous. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this dog. She, <laughs> she literally jumped out of Sean's arm to go hunting bells. <laughs> You're welcome. Here to help. <laughs> All right. So here's the puppy in his Christmas regalia. How cute is he? And you said this was one of the airports? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember that. I don't remember. Why. I don't remember if it was Heathrow like or Dubai. Like a security dog or drug dog or something? Mm, I don't even think it was that. I think it's just somebody traveling with their damn pet. So, um, oh, whoops, this isn't Beck's year either. Whoop, my bad. Picked the wrong one. Quinch says, I'm already not having a great night, so I'm going to refrain about further discords. Because, hey, Quinch, we want you to have a good night, so hope you're having a good holidays. Hope you're enjoying a good beverage tonight. You're all here surrounded by friends who love and support you. Wow, that was like, sound like an infomercial. It's not an infomercial, it's true facts. Beck says it can be super annoying. So, as I said, we tend to go to the beach for the day on Christmas. And then we end Christmas by going to... Uh, I can't find the picture, of course. Wendy says, I tried putting Christmas lights on my dog one year for Christmas. How'd that go? But the lights broke on the way to the start. Oh, for a Christmas run. But oh. The lights broke on the way. Aww. That's very sad. Brian wears them on his hat and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes I have some battery power ones. We can even put them in like in the windshield of the car and stuff. I don't think the cops like that. Very much, <laughs> but I think it feels jolly. So whatever. One of our neighbors has the like the reindeer ears on their car. I always think that's fun. I was trying to find. But no, I've never put lights on a pet. Although like a guinea pig with Christmas lights. Would could be, be kind of fun. Could be entertaining. Yeah. Or maybe a guinea pig on a Christmas train going around a Christmas tree. How do you think that's going to go for the guinea pig? Does anybody care? Well, the pig might. You know, I used to go out with a girl whose dad was a vet. And what he would yes, tell me did. back in high school is he's like, I don't know why these people always bring me their disposable pets to work on. And I kind of feel like that's how it is with hamsters and guinea pigs. That's just not nice. But if the vet says it, you know it's true. Not nice. Well, I was trying to find our final thing. Whitney oh, wait, says here's... she did win the costume contest, though. So, yay. That is good. That is good. And Beck says, I know that the year before I could come in the winter, you had your favorite people. Christy, you can't fool me. <laughs> my favorite people? Who are my favorite people? I have favorite people? I guess not Beck's is what she's saying. That's not true. Uh, Quinch says, one of my two favorite bands covered our other favorite band for a charity thing earlier tonight, and I dedicated it to me, and I missed it. Oh, oh. They, they dedicated it to him, and he missed it. That's a bummer. That's a bummer. Was it recorded where you can have it for posterity? I'll tell you what wasn't a bummer. Was my new, my new Legend of Lando art was featured on the Star Wars show today. That's pretty cool. Along with two or three other artists, so I was really, really touched by that. Um, and if you have already purchased Legend of Lando, thank you. If you have not, please do so in the next 10 or 15 minutes. That would be very much appreciated. <laughs> and then after or you do longer. that, please share it with everyone you know. Because um, we, we need Disney and Lucasfilm to be impressed by this. So you know what I'm saying? Like, the pressure is on you to make this happen. There's my favorite people, Bex. Oh, Christy's favorite people. Hey, one of those favorite people is Christy. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> I mean, can you do that? You're like, Christy's like, my favorite people are me and these other two people. Bex and, and Sue. All right. Bex and Sue and Christy. Sue Bear. Sue Bear and Bex. And here's another one of Bex, too. Looking adorable. That Monique. was New Year's Eve, though, not Christmas. But Whitney says, congrats. And Monique says, cool. <laughs> Bex Be is laughing. Bex is like, hee <laughs> hee. Look how cute Bex is. And Tomcat says, and her 23 husbands, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, 23 seems like a lot of work. That's a good one of Bex. That might be, well, that may be a lot, 23. I think we could scale that down a little uh, bit. Whitney says, we bought one. We did our part. Come on, you slackers. Yeah. Oh, good job, Whitney. And everybody share, share, share. Please, please, please. Got to get outside of the normal sphere of influence. Hmm. Quinch Press says, the drummer thinks it will get posted on YouTube soon, but he's not sure. Not sure if the charity will be okay with it being posted as mm -hmm. they charge people to see the event. Yeah. Those damn charities. Hey. Who, who do they think they are? Helping people and raising money and whatnot. <laughs> Whitney says, poor Brian. Not a favorite person. That's right. Oh, he's like a given. And Quinch Press says, awesome being featured on the Star Wars show. Yeah, thank you, Quinch. It was on the screen for like two seconds, but I appreciate it. It was a big deal. 
That's like the other thing. We're, they were doing something and they had an Octopolis pin on. What was that? Oh, yeah. One of the videos a week or two ago, one of the Star Wars podcast, they were just doing a jokey video, but this guy has an Octopolis enamel pin on his jacket that he wears all the time. Mm-hmm. He was even thinking about it and they go do a close up on him and you can see the, the octopus. So that was pretty They cool. said they need the link for Lando. Oh, yeah, we can do that. If, I don't have it. If Les Dudas was here, it would have already been posted because he's... He was here earlier. He's on the ball like that. But let me get it for you guys real quick. So, uh, for Christmas dinner, we do the traditional thing of going to Chinese restaurant for Christmas dinner. And that's all right. Time. You better believe it. Brian and took the photo. it's so good. Brian took the photo. That's why he's not in the picture. But we go every year, five years in a row, we've gone to China Cascade Palace for Christmas dinner. This is the year before Bex because I could find that one fast. <laughs> Oh, let's do this. I already put it in. Thank you, let's do this. I appreciate you. Happy holidays. And then let's so do this. Got to see the world premiere of Wonder Woman 1984. Ooh. Yeah, and he gave it an eight out of ten. Mm. So stay stay tuned for that, guys. But congratulations, let's do this. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. That's cool. Eight out of ten. That sounds promising. Oh, and Quinch Press posted the link. You guys, you got the link like three times now. So <laughs> if you fail to make your purchase, you can't blame us. Maybe they did just didn't want it. Uh, that's not possible. <laughs> you guys wouldn't leave me hanging like that. So here we are at China Cascade, enjoying our ginger. No, dumplings. Bex is not in this one. No. I showed Bex is. This was the year before Bex. I. Uh, we we're Bex free. We we're this Bex Christmas. free this year. Yeah. I. Uh, I have one of Bex, but I can't find it. It's buried in the gazillion Bex, pictures. Bex was on our summer digs, and she only made one of the winter digs. Yeah, she made one summer and one winter, and she was here this past, before COVID, when, but I couldn't find that photo fast enough. But let's make it in with Bex, and Happy New Year. We can do that. Any second now, because the interwebs are very slow. <laughs> there she is. Beck says, I was, I was in, in Japan, Japan half, half the time. time. Yeah. True enough. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Party time. Excellent. Happy New Year's. Woo, 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 woo. All right, so now everybody, now everybody go watch um, The Snow Miser. That's right. A Year Without Santa Claus with The Heat Miser and what's, The Snow um, Miser. What's the dude that, um, what's, dang, what's that guy's name that is the main guy? Santa Claus? No. The guy that's the mailman. Who's his, What's his real name? Oh, it's the dancey guy. Yeah, what's his name? Come on, people. Fred. Fred Astaire is the mailman. Is it Fred Astaire? Fred Astaire is the mailman. He's the one that does the voice? Fred Astaire is the mailman and all the all those, yeah. Yeah. That's the best part. I was listening to him walk, walk around and dance and talk. Mm-hmm. All right, so a homework assignment. Homework? Christmas homework? Yeah. Watch. Uh-oh. Apparently, Dr. Christie is giving you homework. We for all Christmas. agree that um, Claus was a good one. Mm-hmm. We agree the Christmas Chronicles is a good one. We agree White Christmas is a good one. Jingle All the Way got a nod out. Um, we like White Christmas. Christmas Vacation. You can't go without seeing Christmas Vacation. Um, the Santa Claus Original. What else did we have? I don't know, but like Christmas Vacation, um, they just did a big interview. Rolling Stone interviewed like most of the Oh yeah, of the Jingle cast. Jangle, that was a great one. Yeah, Jingle Jangle was good. Rare and, exports, right? And like, I think Christmas Vacation has like become a classic now. It was just like an out there Die Hard got fun movie. Yeah, Die Hard for sure. Um, you sorry. guys, I did some Die Hard art oh, yeah. for the anniversary last year. I forgot about that. And it never got released, so we'll see what happens. Maybe it'll show up on Patreon. Maybe a reason to join the $35 level of Patreon. Get your own Die Hard print. Mm-hmm. Um, my little accent came out there. Did you hear Beck that? Beck says, love, I did hear it. Beck says, yeah, I see where you say that. Everybody says love, actually. I've never seen it. We've seen it. You just don't like mushy movies, so you've tuned it out. I saw love, actually. What's it about? It's a romantic movie. We've seen uh, that's it. probably why I don't remember it. If shit don't die in the first 10 seconds, no. I ain't watching it. Christy likes action. I like blow up and action. She likes splody. And I also like musicals, but yeah. I, need musicals, some, I need some stuff to happen. Musicals or explosions, but nothing in between. Yeah, I don't I don't like the romance thing. Holiday was pushing it for me. I mean, it was cute enough, but it was... I Hol- the... Holiday was the cast made that movie. Yeah. yeah. It was cute, but... Mm. What? I'm going to need the die... I'm going to need that die hard, says Whitney. Yeah. Yeah, if I don't get a contract to do it officially, I'll be releasing it through Patreon for sure. And 
I think for January, I might have some Back to the Future art coming to Patreon. So stay tuned Ooh. for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you going to talk about January anyway? Um, yeah, we can do that real quick. So um, for those of you that are... Exploding on, musicals. That should be a thing. That should be a thing. Uh, we're going to bring our... I was talking about it earlier today, but we are going to bring our uh, Coloring Comics course to Patreon for 2021. So um, anyone who's interesting interested in, in learning um, how to do coloring in Photoshop and on the iPad. Um, that'll be coming to our group class and our mentoring levels. So stay tuned for that. That'll start in January. Um, January, man. Coming soon. That's right. That's why Dr. Christie got to get busy on that curriculum. Why Dr. Christie got to do everything? Because you're the educator. I'm just the talent. You've said it a bunch of times. History is just the talent. Um, Quinch Press says, Anna and the Apocalypse was kind of an action horror musical. Huh. That's a good point. Good point. That's like my, one of my favorite episodes of Buffy is when they did the musical Buffy. So oh, yeah. I love that. That's true. That should happen What's more What's this often. news about Firefly getting a reboot yeah. with a new cast? With a new cast. New cast, though. That's not cool. I don't know. Not Anyways. cool. I need me some Nathan. And actually, um, Alan, speaking of that, Alan Turdick just got a new gig, too. Um, he's an alien detective something. Oh. Did you see that yet? I missed that. Um, I can't remember. If, I want to say Sci-Fi Channel, but that may not be right. Um, yeah. No. It's uh, Bex is like, what? When? Where? Nathan had better be in it. But no. Disney plus family friendly. Yeah. Nathan's family friendly. Come on now. But, um... Let's do this. It's like Disney Plus. Yeah, Tracy's like it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Alan, you know, so they've got the new Cassian Andor show coming yeah. out, and that's K two S O. That's before Rogue One, and K two is nowhere in the trailer. So mm-hmm. my guess is that either he'll meet K two in the first couple of episodes, or he won't meet K two until like the, the season finale. Like yeah, the, because the Alan, I'm one. just saying, got a new gig. He's gonna be an alien detective on a new show. He don't got time for that. Well, if he's doing voiceover, he's probably got time for everything. Oh, that's true. But he's like cha-ching. Firefly cha-ching. reboot relaunch rumors pop up every few years. I'll believe it when it happens. That's the truth. And let's do this as Alan promoted it for Metaverse. Yeah, um, I saw um, our friend um, Shan- Shannon Eric Denton worked on. Um, with that, them on... Um, con Man. Con Man. I could think of that word. On Con Man. And so they're all kind of friends. And so that's where I saw Oh, and Let's Do This says the name of the show is going to be Resident Oh, Resident Alien. Alien. Yes, thank you. That's it. Mm-hmm. Quinch Press says, I've been in Nathan's house when he wasn't home. I Though I was invited. Were you? Were you really? That, that seems it's like... a little sketchy. That seems sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking the, the Popo won't believe that story when they I'd like show to be up. in Nathan's house. Just yeah, saying. I bet you would. <laughs> One of her 23. He's like, I was. All right, final thoughts, comments? Hey, final thoughts are, thank you guys. You know, 2020 has been one hell of a year. And when we started this Twitch channel in March, uh, late March, had no idea what to expect. I've said before, but I thought it was going to be like a 30-day thing. And then this thing was going to be over and everything was going to be back to normal. Obviously, that's not what happened. Um But you guys have stuck with us through it all. We really appreciate your support. We really appreciate hanging out with all of you and getting to know you better. And we just want to wish you guys a very, very happy holidays and a great... Happy holidays. That's right. And a great new year. And even though this is the last TNT of the new year, it's not... Or of this year, it's not the last TNT (laughs) ever. So um, come back for Tiki Tuesday. We're going to have our ugly Christmas party sweater. Ugly Christmas sweater Sweater party. party on Tiki Tuesday, and whoever wins the worst sweater is going to win the sketch from that night. Ooh, challenge! That's right. So we have an impartial judge. Challenge! Wait, she's right over there. Our impartial judge will judge the ugly Christmas sweaters. That's me. And um, I'm impartial. She'll pick the winner, loser. I don't know how we, how we choose that, but um, you will win the sketch from that night. So, And that will be the final TNT. Of 2020. So I guess Quinch Press is going to have to figure out Discord so we can see his photo. That's right. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I will also have an ugly Christmas sweater. So um, anyone who is a subscriber on Twitch or a member on Patreon has access to Discord. You'll be able to upload your photo and share it with the group. And we look forward to seeing you.